went first last night at CinemaCon this year, and while they didn't release any footage to the public, CinemaCon is a trade show for exhibitors to get theater owners excited about studios' upcoming slates, although it has become also now an opportunity to reach out to fans and in the industry and make some headlines. It's almost like upfronts, but for movies, and upfronts, of course, are for television and now streaming, and those are coming up later this month. Uh, but anyway, Sony went first, and while they didn't release any footage, they still managed to make headlines, although, although their biggest headline didn't go quite the way they expected, with many fans doing a double take as Sony doubled down on their Spider-Man-less, solo villains turned anti-hero movies strategy, even in the wake of Morbius. Yeah, that was a real shocker. All right, let's discuss. I'm going to break down all of Sony's big announcements from last night. They kicked off the day before their presentation, releasing the first poster for their Whitney Houston biopic, the first female one to join the crowded landscape since uh, Bohemian Rhapsody's mega success. We're talking almost a billion dollars at the box office and an Oscar, deservedly so, for Rami Malek. That means money for studios and a, a, and a possible award for talent. So that's the brass ring that all these movies are going to be reaching for going forward. Uh, in addition to Whitney Houston, Madonna's coming next after that from Universal, spearheaded by Madonna herself. Either a fantastic idea or a horrible idea. But it should be at least, at the very least, no matter what, an interesting idea. Uh, and Madonna's already taken too long to pick who's going to play her, but hopefully we'll find that out soon. As for who's playing Whitney Houston, that would be Star Wars' Naomi Ackie, who had a horrible role in, those in that last movie, but at least it got her on the board, and now she's playing Whitney Houston. I think this poster's okay. I think you'd have to really be a Whitney Houston fan to get the references and how that's representative of the early stage of her career. But it's an incredible story with a fabulous music library. In fact, when I saw that uh, teaser poster, I went and listened to I Want to Dance with Somebody, one of her most famous songs. Now, of course, her tragic ending, I think, has taken over a lot of her story, uh, especially with people today. Uh, True story, uh, my parents got us tickets to the Michael Jackson 30th anniversary concert. I was there when she took the stage and shocked everyone with her strikingly thin appearance. And that was, unfortunately, the beginning of the end for her, uh, at least, you know, as far as the public being aware of how, how serious things were. Uh, but I think that it will be great. I'm, I'm not sure how much of her life the movie will cover, but it will be wonderful, I think, to remind people and to change, I think, that final image of Whitney Houston for people uh, to the part of her career where she was just so famous and iconic. And pointing out her, 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 um, her leg not only her legacy, but how she actually got her start thanks to being you know, part of the lives of some famous singers before her. So very great, fantastic story. Uh, Sony, by the way, also promised another Ghostbusters movie. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. They were very, very clear about their ambitions for the franchise going forward. And I think the last movie, everyone can agree, it was a very good palate cleanser. If Bill Murray will be part of this franchise going forward, that remains to be seen. He's currently, of course, being investigated, and it's impossible to comment on that without knowing what he's been accused of, uh, which has not been made public yet. So that puts, let's put a pin in that. We'll see what happens. They also showed the very first trailer, but did not release it for their awards contender, The Woman King. Although, Viola Davis, what timing, just said that critics were worthless in response to the criticism she's received for her Michelle Obama performance in the First Lady show on Showtime. I know that critics, you know, their comments can sting, but, you know, what, right when she's going into um, an awards season and promoting this other film, I'd hate to see her hurt that film's chances before it even gets off the ground. You know, obviously, critics shouldn't let those comments uh, affect them, but we don't always live in a perfect world. So we'll see what happens. By the way, I love Viola Davis. She has an Oscar herself. She's incredibly talented. And I think the First Lady show, while not groundbreaking, is, is very entertaining, and I think it has some interesting commentary. But I would agree that her performance as Michelle Obama seems more like a parody or a caricature than serious acting. And I would say 
I haven't seen the criticism, so I don't know if they're they go overboard or if perhaps they're you know too cruel. We live in a clickbait world these days, but I think just you know I think constructive criticism is valid. And instead of saying critics are useless, I think Viola Davis would have been better off by explaining the choices that she made because I think they do raise some questions, and maybe she would have an explanation that would make everyone go, okay, now I understand why you made the choice that you did. Uh, have you seen Viola Davis as the first, uh, as you know, on the first lady as Michelle Obama? What do you think of her performance? Uh, and Sony also showed a bit of Adam Driver's sci-fi movie, 65, but that doesn't come out until spring of next year. And the first 15 minutes of Bullet Train, which we know Sony loves because they've now spun two cast members from that movie into their own Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man-less movies. You know, they're doing this tactic. And I think that's very aggressive, especially since the Bullet Train teaser trailer, which came out a few months ago, did not really connect. It did not go big. So that would give me some cause for concern if I were Sony as to whether or not I wanted to, maybe they're doing that to try and, you know, now that I think about it, maybe they're trying to do that to make Bullet Train seem like a bigger deal. They're like, well, you might've not been sure if you want to see Bullet Train, but it stars Craven and El Muerto. And everybody's like, who's El Muerto? More on that in a moment. But they had to do, they can't stop doing Craven because they've already started filming. Cameras are rolling. Uh, apparently they showed a brief, some brief footage in the sizzle reel at the end of the presentation. But as for El Muerto, starring Bad Bunny from Bullet Train, uh, why, why, wait, why not wait to see how Bullet Train does? Because Bad, uh, Bad Bunny's El Muerto doesn't come out until 2024. That's very far away. Both movies, by the way, are slated for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. Uh, you know, January is a tough month for movies, but some films have traditionally done quite well in that holiday weekend. Uh, so Sony's planting a flag. That's where they're going to release these films. That's where they actually had wanted to release Morbius, as you might recall. Well, that had moved so many times, but that was one of its dates. But then they wanted to give Spider-Man No Way Home room to breathe, and so they pushed Morbius. Uh, rightfully so. Spider-Man No Way Home made a lot of money. Uh, when the El Muerto story first came out in social media, before hitting the trades, you know, people were tweeting from the presentation. Uh, again, a lot of us thought it was maybe a joke. I mean, we knew it wasn't, but we were like, are you making a joke? And they were like, no, we're serious. As you know, I enjoyed Morbius. I defended Morbius. But when I put my studio executive hat on, I can see clearly that the audience has spoken with poor box office and even a poor cinema score. Morbius was very inexpensive for a comic book movie, only $70 million, uh, before advertising though, to be fair. Uh, so it could make the difference in the ancillary market. It could make up that difference. Uh, but what about damage to the Spider-Man brand? That's, I think, the, the real issue. Also, El Muerto has appeared, as the internet was quick to point out, in just two Spider-Man issues, not even comics, just two issues this character appeared in, and is a Mexican wrestler, which some say is not maybe the representation that they want, a little too on the nose. Plus, while Bad Bunny certainly has his fans thanks to his music, reaction from Spider-Man fans and uh, movie fans seems divided with many questioning his acting ability. Although it should be noted that Bad Bunny does have wrestling experience. So how much act acting will he really need to do? Maybe that's why they picked El Muerto. But I, I think they still should have picked somebody else. Uh, after animation has found tremendous success appealing to the Latino market and beyond, these movies did not just, even though they focus on Latino characters, they do not just appeal to the Latino market. They've been huge successes, particularly in Kanto. So now superhero movies are giving it a shot with Warner Brothers' Blue Beetle movie coming up and not only Oscar Isaac as Moon Knight, the character's ethnic background is not made clear in the show, but I, uh, uh, Oscar Isaac is Guatemalan and voices Sony's animated Miguel O'Hara, speaking of Sony. But of course, there's also the upcoming Disney Plus special Werewolf by Night, which stars Gael Garcia, Garcia Bernal as the lead character. And Bernal's longtime collaborator, Diego Luna, is of course Cassian Andor, and he has his own Star Wars series coming in December. We'll see which of these characters, if any, click with audiences, although Cassian Andor is already pretty popular. I love Cassian Andor. But these other characters, and it looks like Bad Bunny's El Muerto might have the biggest hill to climb, but let's see who they get to write and direct the film. He was saying a lot of nice stuff about David Leach, so maybe he's gonna try, you know, Bad Bunny and his comments on this. So maybe, uh, on, on Bullet Train and stuff. So maybe he's gonna try and really try and convince David Leach to come over and do that. I don't think that's gonna happen, but let's see. Maybe David Leach knows somebody. Maybe David Leach knows another other stunt guy who might want to get into directing. That's what I would do if I were Bad Bunny uh, and Sony. As 
asked for why Sony keeps making these solo villain movies. The answer is Venom, as both films have been extremely successful, and a third Venom was promised during the CinemaCon presentation last night. Sony will keep making these other movies because they keep thinking they can make lightning strike again, although fans do seem hell-bent now after they've seen what's possible with No Way Home that they do not want this to continue. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, you guys made yourselves very clear with Morbius, but will you continue to do that? Like at one point, will you rebel against Venom itself? The second movie was not good. I love the first movie, but the second movie really dropped the ball. Uh, and it only did well, I think, because people were expecting a repeat of the first film, and then also people were excited for Spider-Man No Way Home, and it had that end credit scene. I think it really benefited from the proximity. It became an appetizer to Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, although they're like, we have other Spider-Man movies coming up, we'll just stick Venom 3 close to that, and we'll see. So, I mean, maybe they'll put Venom in, you know, while well, he has his own movie now, Spider -Man, Venom 3 they've promised. But well, as for what's happening with Tom Holland and company, well, I'm sure they have to sort his contract out. Has not been announced yet. Uh, so I think so uh, Sony's live-action main Spider-Man movies are on hold for now. So that means the Spider-Verse will have to do the heavy lifting for the brand with its two-parter, uh, coming out very long from now. <laughs> they just pushed the first installment across the Spider-Verse to June 2nd, 2023. And then you'll get Beyond the Spider-Verse, the title announced last night, on March 29th, 2024. Oh, that's long. Uh, they're like, two best animated movie Oscars? I mean, they won for the first one. Let's see. They've changed a lot of the key talent, though. But they brought over, I believe, uh, the writer from Soul, so that's exciting. Uh, they showed the first 15 min minutes of the next movie across the Spider-Verse to the crowd, and the crowd was wowed, although they may have, might have been on a high for being there and getting to see it early. Gwen, although I loved the first movie so much, so I have high hopes for this, and the teaser looked great. Gwen Stacy was in this first 15 minutes fighting her version of the Vulture in her universe with help from Miguel O'Hara, and Issa Rae confirmed as voicing Jessica Drew, who the footage revealed is pregnant. Seems like a spoiler to me, but since everybody tweeted about it, I can share it in this video. That mirrors Jessica Drew's previous solo title, which was excellent. I loved that comic so much. It was so good. I felt bad it was canceled. I would have loved to have seen it continue forever. You know, they have seen these really great, particularly the She-Hulk and Jessica Drew comics, which I think had some of the same talent behind them, were so good, but they just didn't last. And I hope, I'm hoping to see that quality be more popular and translate over into uh, live action and animation. But anyway, she had her baby, Jerry, who had his own powers. And Jerry Drew was, of course, Spider-Man in the alternate universe comics uh, Spider-Girl featuring Mayday Parker, uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane's daughter, who was a very popular character. So that Jerry Drew is on Sony's radar is something to take note of. They're digging deep. And the Spider-Verse movies, in fact, it was confirmed last night, will feature 240 characters. Seems like too many to me, but that's cool. That's exciting. Uh, I don't know how you can feature 240 characters unless you're counting background characters. We'll see. Uh, they're like, go frame by frame through the entire movie. We dare you. Let's try it. So what do you think? Share your thoughts on these projects down below and whether or not you'll continue to rebel against Sony's solo Spider-Man-less movies or take them on one at a time and see what you think. And also, is there a danger of diluting the Spider-Man brand or can you just not have too much of a good thing? I would wager dilution is very possible, especially with this, these, this approach. And also, what do you think of Sony's other announcements? Share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today so you don't miss out on any of my CinemaCon coverage this week. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.